people are always going to be like, what did you do as the mm-hmm. man? Which is what I got. You know, when I told people I was getting divorced, what'd you do? <sighs> okay, here we go. Because everyone assumes it's infidelity, typically. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I think that for a lot of us, it's a sense of duty. Like, I promised God. Mm. I promised my family. I promised literally everyone. I promised myself that I would figure this out no matter what. And so you think that staying around means that you are doing everything that you can. And I think what I learned over time is that that's not the case, actually. Because staying is one thing. Mm -hmm. Staying and being active and figuring, figuring out what the problems are and being active in the solutions is something completely different. I think now women have the opportunity to choose what exactly they want that they know that past generations of women have not had the opportunity and they want what they want Mm -hmm. and they want the best guy to settle down and be with them and i completely understand it i literally i get it you know it's just and i know people hate hearing it but it is actually the truth and i've now seen it in real time myself so people can't lie to me about it either i've i've watched it i'm in different groups. Um, I'm in different singles groups and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Women talk about the things that they want every day. Men who they say that they want character wise and everything show up to them every day. They're in their comments. We're having discussions, but they don't look the way that they want them to look. I hope that you're the one and that's are you a content creator youtuber maybe you've interviewed someone on your video podcast and they said something that was really really good or maybe you said something that was really really good well enter opus clips this is the platform that i use when i want to share 30 to 60 second video clips that I can share with the whole world. I mean, you can share those clips on TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, uh, Instagram Reels, like these 30 to 60 second clips that Opus Clips can give to you with the click of a mouse. All you have to do is upload the recording and boom, Opus Clips within maybe 10 minutes will give you 15 to 25 different clips with description on the side of the video and it also gives you like a title and it gives you a rating and let you know how powerful that clip can be used on social media from a rating of 99 all the way down to maybe 60. This is a phenomenal platform that has took my social media marketing to another level. If you want to level up your social media game, go in the description below right now and get the link for Opus Clips. This will not disappoint you. Life after divorce, it can be challenging. But what is that process like going through a divorce? And if you desire to love again, or maybe even remarry, what is it even like dating after being married for a certain amount of years? But we're going to talk about that in today's segment of It's Scary to Remarry. What's up, Brave Arts community? This is Sean Heineman, your premier pre-engagement coach, back with another segment of A Scary to Remarry, wanting you to love fearlessly. This is our Life After Divorce series. It's been amazing. It's been helping so many people. So we continue to bring you great guests who share their experience, who can help you along the way. He's no stranger to the podcast. Brave Arts community, let's show some love to Matt Walker. How are you doing today, sir? What's going on, brother? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Thank you. How are you? How things been? Man, I'm good. Last time we got on, this is actually our third recording together, but the last, I think the first time we recorded, it was like during COVID. So it was good. Yeah, it was. Yeah, Yeah, right. So we've been at it for a while. Mm -hmm. Uh, The second video we did, we talked about the whole colorism thing and and Kendrick and Drake and and that real went crazy. You you were saying things on there and it went crazy on Instagram. Uh, okay. I'll have that link in the description for those who probably like, what, what did he say? What did he say? So you got to go watch it. <laughs> uh, 
For those Absolutely. who might not know who Matt Walker is, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do. Sure, absolutely. Um, what's going on, everybody? My name is Matt Walker. Um, I am 43 years old. I reside in the DMV. Um, on social media, you can find me at King Midas, C-H, that's King Midas, K-I-N-G-M-I-D-A-S-C-H. Um, and I am a divorced man. I was married for 10 years. I was with my ex-wife for 14 in total and um, have now been single again for about three years it's been yeah it's been about three years and so I am just here to talk about my journey what that's been like and just to provide any kind of insight that I can for anybody who might be going through anything similar Mm -hmm. for sure because that's what it's all about we want to be able to help some people in this process we want to talk about this whole whole dating experience too and what that looked like but we'll save that for later on then so uh, okay, so let's just kind of go back down memory lane. How how did you and, and your ex, ex-wife ex meet? So we met in college. Um, we both went to the same university. Um, I'm five years older than her. So actually, when I was at the university, I was going into my master's program. And I had worked a summer, a pre-college program uh, where you had high school seniors coming in to be college freshmen. They had to take some college classes ahead of time and basically get to live on campus. And we met there. And, you know, over time, we didn't start dating until she was 22. I was 27. Mm -hmm. Um, But, you know, we just we started dating. We made it official. um, And then we just kind of progressed from there. We were together for three years, got engaged, um, moved down to the D.C. area, got married. Um, we lived in DC, ended up having two kids. Um, and yeah, that was, that's pretty much the yeah. gist of it, you know? Yeah. So, so what, what made you say she's the one for me during that time in your life? <laughs> um, when I saw her willingness to sacrifice herself for me, mm-hmm. I think that really showed me a lot. I think it really made me just kind of, I hadn't really experienced that level of love mm-hmm. before from a woman. And mm-hmm. so I think when I saw that, I was like, oh, okay, this this woman is different. And I really want to, I would love for her to be my wife. Yeah. For yeah. Sure. And you said y'all have two kids together. Correct. Two daughters. Yep. Two. Ooh, what is it mm-hmm. like <laughs> with two daughters? <laughs> it's a good time. Uh <laughs> And my daughters are five and nine, soon to be five and ten. Mm-hmm. Um, it's interesting, you know. I have I can honestly say that being a dad of a girl dad specifically mm-hmm. has trained me in a way as a man that I don't know if I would have gotten if I'd have gotten the son that I really wanted, at least not initially. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I'm somebody, I'm a man who I've been mentoring and mentored young men since like official capacity since I was like 18, 19. Mm. And so I have so many mentees, you know what I mean? So I feel like I still am able to help affect change with younger men. Um, And so that's kind of like where I kind of get that out in terms Mm -hmm. of, you know, my still desire to want to have a son. Mm -hmm. But having two daughters really it slowed me down it made me really check my communication Mm -hmm. it allowed me to step outside of myself and really see how my voice and my presence impacts others right and just a quick example you know i had to remind myself at one point that my daughters were going to daycare so they have their mother that they interact with they have all the women at the daycare or the early learning centers Mm-hmm. And every woman, every person there is a woman. Mm-hmm. So I'm literally the only male presence that they deal with mm-hmm. every day. When it was those scenarios outside of the little boys they would be in school with. And I think when I had that realization of how important that responsibility was, it just, it changed me. And it changed how I move and how I operate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's real. Yeah, I have my daughter. She just turned 21 from my previous marriage. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I have a grown kid. So, yeah, man. So they they gonna they'll grow up before your very eyes, man. So that's good. That's what's happening. So I'm I'm taking every moment I can. I yeah, am. yeah, mm-hmm. man, for sure. 
uh, when did you know that there was trouble in paradise? Like, when did you know, like, this marriage is, it's, it's starting to go downhill. We, we might not recover. Mm. I would say. Or whatever you feel comfortable with sharing. Yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah. I would say I knew probably about 10 months. I knew for sure mm. about 10 months before it happened. Mm. Um, and then, yeah, a few months ahead of time, some other things just happened and mm. it was it was pretty much a wrap. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But it's something I definitely saw coming. There were definitely issues and problems that had happened along the entire way, you know? And I think the biggest piece that I've learned is back in the day, we didn't have conversations about red flags a lot like we do now. You know, we didn't, the language that we're able to use now, the things that we're able to label, the different reactions that we have to things, you know, now we have so much more um, language that we're actually able to express these things. Mm -hmm. And then as men, we are now not only being given more space, but we're taking more space to actually express how we're feeling. Unfortunately yeah. for somebody like me, it took too long to get to that place. And that's why I have no ill will or anything towards my ex-wife. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I completely understand. It. Mm. I do. Mm -hmm. And I've had to sit with that. And that was probably one of the harder things to do. Because, mm. you know, there, it happens. You get spiteful. You get angry. And then you have to sit with the reality like, nah, I, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. For real. Because, and I want to ask you this too. My ex-wife and I, and I think we might have talked about this before, we were married 15 years, but the last five years, Matt, oh, yeah. we tried to make it work, right? Yeah. Um, and and my the, the funny thing is my ex-wife told me, and the Bravehearts community know the story, but she told me, she was like, you don't love me anymore. Mm -hmm. And I remember I was like, no, I, I, I love you. Like, no. Nah. <laughs> so... I had to sit with that for a minute by myself and was like, oh, shoot, I guess she she sees something that I'm not even really aware. Like she see it in my actions. Yeah. And so my question to you is. What makes men stay in marriages longer than than they should? Because if I'm correct, I think statistically men will stay longer because we always thought about that 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 percentage of women you know 70 percent of women file for divorce but we never really talk about the in-between stuff so yeah um i think and you know it's a question that i've gotten so many times mm. and i've had to think about it i think there's a few things mm -hmm. i think um embarrassment i think who wants to be the divorce guy you know mm -hmm. um i think that there is shame because at the end of the day, what you know is going to happen is that people are always going to be like, what did you do as the mm -hmm. man? Which is what I got. You know, when I told people I was getting divorced, what'd you do? <sighs> okay, here we go. Because everyone assumes it's infidelity, typically. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I think that for a lot of us, it's a sense of duty. Like, I promised God. Mm. I promised my family. I promised literally everyone. I promised myself that I would figure this out no matter what. Mm -hmm. And so you think that staying around means that you are doing everything that you can. And I think what I learned over time is that that's not the case actually, because staying is one thing. Mm -hmm. Staying and being active in figuring, figuring out what the problems are and being active in the solutions is something completely different. And I think I will speak for myself in this. And I've, you know, talked to other men who have been divorced as well. A lot of us stayed around and, but we were not present mentally and emotionally and physically, like physically we're in the house with them and we're handling the business, you know, like we're helping with the kids, we're doing all the things, but we're not connected and we're not together. And I think a lot of women end up feeling lonely and feeling like they're on their own. And so, although men, we do stay a lot, I don't know if we're all as active as we actually need to be 
in coming with the solutions for what's going on. And I also don't think that we have necessarily been empowered enough to be told that if something is going wrong, that you need to be the catalyst for change. And that also, if something is going wrong and the other person doesn't want to fix it, it's okay to pause. It's okay to separate. It's okay to, you know, make certain moves. For us, it's always kind of been like, be the man, be stoic. Mm-hmm. That's it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's interesting because I remember going through my divorce and I was talking to a pastor friend of mine and he mm-hmm. said, Sean, you're just loyal to a fault. Like you just... Mm. you sticking around and basically you know it's over yeah but you're just trying to make it work and like you said that, that god factor you're just like oh you know god hates divorce and, and you know yeah. but what is life going to look like on the other side for me as a man and yeah um i was afraid too like what yeah what does life look like on the other side of this what do i tell my children you know yeah my parents were divorced i promised myself as a kid I would do everything I could to never have to deal with the same thing you know and here we are so yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and who and who walks down the aisle thinking that we're going to get divorced right. you know right that's 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 never the goal exactly uh, and and I remember telling uh because we had a blended family my ex-wife had a son before you know we were together and we had our daughter together and I remember us sitting in the uh we was like in a living room and we just broke the news to them and they was just crying like, you know, but I, but we told them at the time we were just going to separate, not divorce. Yeah. And they was just like, like, I can still see that image of the way they looked, even as I talked to you. And I was just like, I just thought that that would never happen. Mm-hmm. And even after the separation. It's less like we tried to make it work again and right. it just didn't work. It was just like. Mm-hmm. Let's let's just call it quits. And I filed for divorce. Mm. <laughs> you know, so that's good. I mean, that's good that you felt that you were strong enough to even be able to do that, man. Yeah. I was yeah. I was nervous about that, but I was like, I have to do this. Mm-hmm. Uh was there any concern on your end of perception of you being the one to file? Yeah, Matt. I sh- and I think that's why I stayed in a marriage as long as I did, because I was just, I was playing this in my head thinking, uh, because, you know, being Christian, you're in the church world, here I am mentoring marriages and, and, and families. And, you know, I'm, I'm known in the church world and I'm just thinking like, how is it that I'm mentoring these marriages and and here it is, I'm getting a divorce. Right. So I tried to stay. That's happy. Yeah. Yeah trying to save face and you know try to smile and it was it was it was bad but I believe one of the best decisions I've ever made and I would never talk bad about my ex-wife but that gave me the courage to say that I can do anything Mm -hmm. after filing for divorce to actually take that step on my own yeah absolutely yeah so while Mary did you both uh did you both seek therapy and if so was there ever an aha moment for you in, in therapy? Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm someone that's very like used to therapy. It's um, my mom brought me to therapy when my parents were getting divorced um, as a kid. Um, and so I have gone to therapy. We did go to therapy together. Uh, we went to pre-engagement counseling, mm-hmm. uh, premarital counseling. And then I think it really slowed down once we got married. You know, because now we have the conversations about nurturing the marriage, go to therapy so you don't need it. Go to therapy to help avoid that, you know, have that third party that can just listen to you, you guys, and keep you on the straight and narrow. And I think that there were times that we did go. There were times I went individually. Sometimes she went individually. Um, But I do think at some point it was almost like too late for that. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. I did have an aha moment. More so when we did our last bout of couples therapy, 
this was in like that 10 month range I was telling you about before when I knew it, like it was probably going to be over, but we were in couples therapy mm -hmm. and there were a lot of aha moments then. And most of those aha moments honestly were based on childhood trauma, learning about attachment theories, mm -hmm. attachment styles, mm -hmm. um, just really unpacking a lot of the unhealthy mental health issues that I'd had. I was diagnosed with ADHD like a year before that. Mm -hmm. um, and so that really answered a lot of questions. And so those aha moments have absolutely changed the trajectory for my life mm -hmm. individually. And I think for our lives now, because we still interact regularly because of the kids, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And for the better completely. It had to go through a lot of bad, mm -hmm. but coming out on the other end of things, yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, I think for me, my aha moment was, actually my, my ex-wife and I, we had a conversation. I remember we were, you know, we're separated and we had a talk and she, I asked her, I was like, moving forward, what do you think I could just do better as an individual? You know, mm. and uh, she was just like, you're selfish. <laughs> I was like, dang. <laughs> just like, you know, you're selfish. And she said that mm. I I was uh, emotionally unavailable. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. Uh, sure. and, and looking back, and it helped me to be a better husband now because I remarried. Right. But I, back then, I just couldn't see it. I just couldn't see it. Yeah. I just couldn't see it. I don't. When, and I always, I literally, when you said it just now, it was kind of, kind of refreshing because that's literally what I always say. I just couldn't see it. I don't know. There's no other way to really kind of explain it. You know, I think what marriage did for me is it unlocked a whole new layer of like self-discovery self-actualization and just really when you're with someone who sees you day in and day out they see all of you <laughs> and they see the things that you don't want to face about yourself mm -hmm. that one that one hurts man because they're telling you things about yourself that sometimes you know and you've been trying to hide for a long time mm -hmm. and so when they see the bear the bear you, it can just be a lot to deal with. And I can be honest now and say that I wasn't ready to hear a lot of that feedback. I was not. I just, I wasn't ready. Um, it didn't make sense to me. You know, I was the guy who had been to therapy as a kid. I was the guy who I'd always been told I communicated more than any other guy, any other person. I had always been that man who showed up better than most other men from the women, you know, from my conversations. Mm -hmm. But I had also never been with any of these women 24-7, 365. I didn't marry any of those women. So they only got to see that one side. And when you only have to keep things on the surface, when it's time to go deeper, and now you're in this uncharted territory of actually having to show up differently as a man, as a husband, and needing that emotional assistance too. It's just this whole other dynamic that a brother was not ready for. There was the training. I missed that manual, you know, I missed that training. And so I think that it was a life experience now, but I'm making sure that my kids are gonna be in such a better space, you know? And so I, I'm thankful for it from that standpoint. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, because of course, when it comes to dating, and I'm just using this, uh, I'm, I'm just saying, but a lot of times dating right. is, is 10 feet wide, but six mm -hmm. inches deep. Right. <laughs> you get married, mm -hmm. and like you said, it, it all comes out. Because they yeah. would be day in and day out. And then they see things that you can't see. But I do believe that's the beauty in marriage, too, that if you're willing and open. See, I know for me, I wasn't willing and open. I thought I was. I thought so, too. Yeah, I thought I was. 
And I realized it was only ap after it all ended. And I had to literally sit with myself and was like, oh, yeah, yeah, you need to you need to tighten some stuff up. Yep. <laughs> For real. Uh, what what was your after the divorce? What was your biggest takeaway? Like what what did all of this teach you? It's so many things. Um, I really feel like divorce has humbled me in a lot of ways. I think it's allowed me to be honest with myself. I see myself for who I really am. And I am now in love with all of me. And that has been a larger journey than I ever expected it to be. I didn't even know it was a journey I needed. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's forced me also to get out of these insecurities, man. You know, because just because I have insecurities and issues doesn't mean that my now ex-wife has to walk on eggshells when she talks to me. Because mm -hmm. that's not fair to her. That's my problem. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really helped me own a lot of my stuff and the things that I need to work on. And I'm just so much more self-aware. Um, and to be quite honest, divorce has allowed me to break some generational curses too. Mm. And I think that although my parents were divorced, mm. also um, the space that I allow my children to be in in order to make sure that they express themselves as young ladies, as little girls, the space that I create for them and the way that I allow them to talk it out, even my five-year-old, we talk out the things that are bothering us and the questions that I ask them to help them think critically for themselves is completely different than what I was raised with. I come from a Jamaican family there. And even just back in the day, I don't even think it's just culturally, you know, there was just was no opinion of a child. There was no thought process. There was no, there was no space for me to, to think. And I was actually taught to not have an opinion on anything. So to now be in this 24 seven, 365, you know, partnership with this other person and she's requiring this emotional investment that I have never tapped into. I'm fully tapped in now. Yeah. And I don't know if that would have happened the other way because it wasn't happening in the marriage. Mm -hmm. I wasn't seeing it. Mm -hmm. So And so I, I have to assume that it was, this is the only way that that would have happened. And so those are the things that I would mainly say that I've really learned about myself from the divorce, like the transparency. Mm -hmm. I've, oh, I'm sorry. I've also learned to be completely honest, no matter how difficult it may be, no matter what mm -hmm. the problem is, what scale of problem, to be completely honest and forthright. Because lying never works. It literally never works. Never. It doesn't. It always ends up coming back up in some way. Yep. yep. Just tell the truth off the rip, rip the Band-Aid off, deal with what's ahead of you, and keep it moving. I mm. promise you lying does absolutely nothing. Mm. It does. I've done it plenty of times over silly things, you yep. know? Yep. So, yep. yeah. I'm with you, man. I'm with you. Like you say, it's to, because I've learned that too over time. It's like, just go to war now. Get it out the way. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> Just deal with it because you don't want to deal with it 10, 15 years from, you know. You don't, man. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. I had to to learn that as well. And like you say about the walking on the eggshells and stuff like that. And I had to learn that myself. Yeah. You know, not to be able to walk on eggshells. And, and to be a place where if, because that's one thing that I didn't do well with my ex-wife was when she expressed herself it was just like, I just started getting frustrated mm -hmm. instead of just listening and take it and, and be yeah. open to that constructive criticism opposed to being defensive. So she felt right. like she couldn't talk to me, you know? So, right. Uh, I was very defensive. So I understand completely. Mm -hmm. And that, and that's kind of like the other piece, right? Cause my ex and I, we've talked about it and we've talked about how with the things that we know now, we know what the red flags were with one another back then. So the relationship probably wouldn't have gotten to marriage because of certain mm -hmm. things that we now recognize. Mm -hmm. And so like one of the things is if I felt like I needed to lie all the time, 
I needed to stop, look within myself. Why don't I feel comfortable? If I felt like she wasn't creating a space that I needed to be in, that I needed to be responsible enough as a man to leave before we even got married. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Or I needed to look within myself and be like, if there's something that's keeping me, I'm keeping me from communicating appropriately, this is my problem. And I need to address this if I plan on being in a relationship with another person. Mm -hmm. And that's just what it is. Mm You know, but and these are all the mature things that I know now at 43. So, hey, mm-hmm. we're here. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. I was from that generation too about children should be seen and not heard. We shouldn't have right. an opinion. We weren't allowed to feel. We weren't right. allowed, like, it was just like, just exist. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember growing up where I felt like I, I could never express how I felt because my mom and I, we would have struggle Olympics. You know, it was just like, oh, well, you got issues, but what about me? I got to pay these bills. And you just like, I ain't asked for all that. I just, right. I just wanted a hug. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. So. Seriously, yeah. Yeah, that's real. Um, no shade to mom, because sometimes mom be watching right. showing stuff. So. <laughs> yeah, hey, hey, hey. No shade to mom. We love you. No shade to mom. <laughs> okay, so now... What is life like for Matt post divorce? I've spent a lot of time in this year, 2024. One of my goals was to really get my mental health together. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm extremely proud of where I've gotten to in this last um going on eight months. And it really made me like when I, you know, when people say they're working on themselves, mm-hmm. like I actually had to like remove myself from social circles, um, different people, family a little bit, and really just concentrate on, okay, what are my issues? Because I'm pretty sure I had to start journaling again and just really getting my thoughts together. And so life for me now is very honest. Um, I mean, things are really good. I have to be honest. I'm the happiest I've been in a long time. Yeah. You know, and it's just, my kids are adjusting pretty well to everything. Mm-hmm. Um, my ex and I get along. I mean, we've never really gotten along much better, mm-hmm. except then before we were dating, we were just friends. Yeah. You know, I think that's because when it comes to the kids, we've always been able to work well mm-hmm. as a team, mm-hmm. and we just kept that same kind of that same kind of energy. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we didn't have a contentious divorce at all. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's a blessing. I know a lot of people don't have that experience. Um, yeah. Thankfully, we did. Yeah, my divorce costs like $180. Um, and that's the paperwork. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I have no complaints. And so that's another reason. It's just like there's nothing to complain about. You know what I mean? When it comes to that stuff. Mm-hmm. And so it's just also, I think, allowed me the space to, like I said, focus on myself. Um, it, my relationship with my kids has never been better. Mm-hmm. So that has been beautiful um dating is i don't have the same complaints that everybody has about dating i know people are like the dating pool has p in it and everything and i think part of it is because i'm a positive person bro Mm -hmm. i will never speak that on my life ever Mm -hmm. you're never going to hear me say that dating pool is bad i'm not going to speak that and because all the people who complain about it say that every day multiple times a day yeah I think that has something to do with it. I genuinely do. Um, I also don't necessarily have a hard time getting dates. So that probably has something to do with it also. <laughs> um, when I was dating one caliber of woman, I would take my, I would date for a little while. I would take myself out of the dating pool because I wasn't getting what I wanted. And I would recalibrate and do some more work on myself. And so like, Earlier this year, I didn't start dating again until la- until June. Mm-hmm. And the women that I've met since then have been really, uh, really great, honestly. Yeah. Character wise, they show up differently and better. And I think it's because I'm better, too. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so. Yeah. So let me ask you this now, because I know. So do you prefer to date younger or older women? I honestly date everyone. <laughs> yeah. I do. 
I my I wasn't I've been in a relationship since my ex and I broke up. Mm-hmm. I was in a relationship for six months. Mm-hmm. That woman was a year older than me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, mostly I will say this: most of the women who are attracted to me or who do like approach me are typically in their earlier thirties, mm-hmm. and they definitely, you know, their whole thing is like, you know, at this age I've matured or something. You know, that's what. People say, I've had a marriage before. So the fact that I've even tried to be a husband at one point, you know, a lot of women respect that. Mm -hmm. You know, and the fact that I'm open to it again, obviously. And so I think, yeah, I I date honestly anybody who is willing to just meet me where I am and is willing to just do a, a few things, like be accountable for the things that they say, own it, not be a liar. As, you know, some of the basic things, which is harder to find than you would think, actually. <laughs> that is something that I have learned, too, in this dating game. But we'll talk on offline about that part. Oh, OK, OK. For yeah. sure. So because so it seems like because it seems like there's so many people, like you say, that complain about dating. And, and I have seen some horror stories, right, because I, I have yeah, sure. some family members that have shown me texts. And 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 videos of people with it, and I'm just like, they yeah. really asked you that, but, you know. So I don't discredit that. But you are one of the very few people that has said your dating experience has went well, and you attribute that mostly to your your attitude. Absolutely, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, it also helps that I've been like back in the gym. Oh, okay, okay, you know. yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm yeah. not gonna say that's a bad thing. You know, it, that that helps a little bit. Uh. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, my attitude, I mean, yeah, I just, I refuse to look negatively at it. And you know, probably what it is too, I also have a very problem solved kind of mindset. So when I wasn't meeting the women that I wanted to meet, I took some of the feedback that I'd gotten from some of the women that I wanted and didn't necessarily want me. I talked to some of my friends, some of the women friends in my life, asked, got feedback from them. And then I just thought about certain things to myself. And then I just, I made those changes. I think that's the part that a lot of people don't actually want to do. And I'm not talking about the, I'm going on a trip for a week out in like the mountains away from everyone. I'm talking about like really facing some, like I have therapists, I have different doctors helping me like really get to the nitty gritty. I had to switch therapists. I had one and he was like, I think I've been been able to help you as long as I can. And he's the one that got me through the divorce. Mm. And he was like, I think you need somebody new. So I took a few months off. Then I got somebody new. She has been amazing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And really helped me like come up with different coping mechanisms and different tools. And so I just feel like, but I had to face a lot of ugly truths. And I just don't feel like a lot of folks want to do that. Yeah. And don't want to do the work that it takes. I also now have to wake up in the mornings and go to the gym. Who wants to do that? <laughs> but the women that I like, like a guy who has muscle and is fit. So, and getting fit is what I need to do anyway for myself, yep. for my kids, mm-hmm. you know, but a lot of people don't want to do that. That's, that's work no one wants to do, you know? And so I think people, a lot of folks, not everyone put themselves in some of these situations. Mm, I love that. Yeah. Because I've been, I, I work out at home. I have all my stuff in the, in my garage oh, and uh, trying to save me a couple of dollars. <laughs> yes, sir. And, uh, uh-huh. I've, you know, been exercising three days a week and and exactly. open it up to four because I'm like, I need to get in at least four days um, and yeah. it can be challenging with little kids and stuff like that. So I, I get it. There was uh, one question I wanted to ask you. Oh, because a lot of times it seems like when it comes to dating, people say that there aren't any good men, there aren't any good women. I don't know if that's just Internet talk or people really out here struggling. And hear me when I say this, Matt. If I was single again, I, and, and, and no shade to my singles because I got single subscribers. I love y'all. But if I was single again, Matt, I could easily get find another wife. Now, I don't know if that's just because I'm a man and there's, you know, more women than men. But I'm just like, why do people make it so hard to find somebody that they want to be with? Um. I think there's a couple of things. I think there is definitely 
an illusion that social media has created. Mm -hmm. People do want to be able to post. Um, I think that for a long time, we may have downplayed the looks requirement that women actually have for men because grandma didn't wasn't able to be as strict with her requirements. You know what I'm saying? Mom couldn't even be as strict with her requirements. And I'm talking, you're my peer. So we're talking baby boomer type parents and grandparents are even old. You know, we have to go with the brother who is moving the right way, wants to be a father, a husband, wants to do this family partnership thing together. But a lot of the women weren't able to move independently, which is also part of the reason why when you talk to a lot of women, they will tell you that their grandmothers told them, make sure you have money on the side, make sure you get education so that you can move around this world freely, right? Mm -hmm. And in case your husband starts doing some wild stuff, let's just keep it a buck. Mm -hmm. I think now women have the opportunity to choose what exactly they want that they know that past generations of women have not had the opportunity and they want what they want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they want the best guy to settle down and be with them. Mm -hmm. And I completely understand it. I literally, I get it. You know, it's just, and I know people hate hearing it, but it is actually the truth. And I've now seen it in real time myself. So people can't lie to me about it either. I've, I've watched it. I'm in different groups. Um, I'm in different singles groups and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Women talk about the things that they want every day. Men who they say that they want character-wise and everything show up to them every day. They're in their comments. We're having discussions. But they don't look the way that they want them to look. And so those men get passed over. And I understand it. And then the guy who's super attractive comes on and he says something. And the women are fawning over him. These are live conversations. And I'm like, this is, again, I have no problem with that. But that brother does not want to be married. <laughs> and he literally has all 30 of you commenting right now. He knows he can have all of you. He's good. Yeah. And this just the complete honest truth. The same thing with a lot of men. Brothers want it. The, the arm candy has always been important. But brothers want next level arm candy right now. But they don't necessarily want to do arm candy work. And they also want the arm candy to be super intelligent, but be a homemaker, but have a career and have her own thing going, but also know how to be a wife and cook and clean. But also treat me like a man, like, brother, sometimes when I listen to bros, I'm just like, y'all, you want her to literally be everything. It doesn't work that way. But yeah. they've seen different reels on social media. So like, no, this is possible. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, folks have to be willing to do what it takes to get what you want. Right. Mm -hmm. And examine the people who do actually are interested in you. And if you don't like the selection that you have, like I said, I didn't do what it takes to change to get a better selection. And that is the wall that people fall at. That's exactly. where everybody stops. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to do that part. They genuinely have no, especially the older folks. Yeah. Our 40s and up, folks? Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> they don't want to change for nobody. No. Yeah. Yeah, take me as I am. <laughs> Come on, Sean. Stop doing that, brother. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't say it was church today. Hey, you Come know, we're going to have some, you know, we're going to have some church. Brother, just a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> no, I get it, man. That Man, yeah. this is so good, man, because there's so many women that eh, love my sisters. But like you, you said, they want that that man the way they want him to look, and I get it. Looks yes. are looks are very important. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But and I was talking to my wife about this the other day. I don't tell me. Let me know how you feel. But I was mm -hmm. like, I don't think you can just have everything. I think some things, you know, what I'm saying like you, you know, yeah. If you if you like a woman built a certain way, that's cool. But she might not be as respectful or she might not have tact. Right. You know what I's saying? Like, ooh, she, she she a brick house, but she don't know how to talk to me. Right. <laughs> right. You know? And the woman that will literally praise you and worship the ground that you walk on and do all the things that you said that you want a woman to do, but she doesn't look the way that you want her to look. I completely understand. I get it.
And that's the conundrum that so many of us are in because it takes a lot of work to change. And also, you know, people, I think we've also romanticized being alone nowadays. It's a social media trend to an extent, Mm -hmm. you know, people dating themselves, which is fine. Yeah. But I feel like we're glorified a little too much, you know, and I, I don't know. This, I'm not even going to open this can of worms. It's so much. I have so much to say, but I'm not even going to, I'm not going to go there. But I, again, I see it in real time now Yeah. for years, not for years, when my marriage was falling apart. And even when we met on social media, mm-hmm. that's when I first started hearing about it a few years ago. And I was completely confused. I would tell men they were lying. I was like, women are not moving like that. Yeah. You guys don't know what you're talking like arguing. Four years later, I have had to apologize to a few of those brothers. Wow. Because I've seen it from, I've literally seen it for myself. I've now had the conversations with other women with, and they've said it out of their mouths. So it's like, it's not a secret anymore. And a lot of women are like, I will wait. I would rather be alone than not have exactly what I feel like I deserve and what I want. And I'm not going to tell anybody that they need to be in a relationship. Nope. I don't like being alone. Like, I can be alone, but I don't want to be alone for the rest of my life. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's what I mean. Yeah. So, hey. Yeah, I guess some people just, they just wouldn't have down that sword, huh? Mm-hmm. They just And like- a lot of men are willing to die on that sword, too. And that is, I think, men's largest downfall to an extent, too brothers not appreciating and really understanding the value of family, what creating a family, being a husband can really look like. And I think sometimes as brothers, we forget, we are just starting these conversations about men communicating, really making sure that men have community among one another. And in that community, making sure we really talk about real stuff going on. Mm -hmm. This is newer. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure why brothers feel like being by themselves for forever and just having random interactions with women for the rest of their lives is one going to be like uber fulfilling, but even more importantly is how you really want to spend like your last end of your days. And I've talked to enough men in their seventies and Mm eighties and they all kind of say similar things, man. Like, making something work back in the day that they should have, you know, put more energy and effort into. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you talk about the people on the deathbeds at the hospice care and folks like that, you can't sit here and tell me that there's all these people visiting all these men when in the same breath, we say society doesn't care about men. Mm -hmm. You got to pick one. Are you by yourself in that hospice? Nobody visiting you because that's what the hospice nurses say, men and women. Yep. That's that's I'm, I'd rather not. Yeah, I'd rather I'd rather not. Yeah, cause life life be moving. You know, I'm I'm life moving. Man, listen, I'm I'm 47. Like I have fewer years ahead of me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So yeah, I mean that's our reality, right? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know. So yeah, it's best to because I know it's easy to think when you're 25, you just like yeah, I got, you know, I got, I'm, I'm, and I get it, but yeah, you get up there and how you treat people is really gonna be a reflection of what you're gonna be like on your deathbed. Absolutely, you know. So absolutely, well, man, man, I'm gonna have to bring you back on the show again, man. You <laughs> every time we, we gotta have keep conversations, going, man. man. We gotta keep having these real discussions, man. Ah, you know, healthily. Yes. I think that's the best part, you yes. know? Yes. And I appreciate you setting the tone and even like recognizing like we can have a discussion about divorce and there's zero mudslinging on the ex wives. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For yeah. what? You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. so, yeah, I appreciate it, man. Thank you so much for the space and the opportunity again, as usual. Yeah. And yeah. For sure, man. Well, uh, for those who might have missed the beginning of the show, uh, let everyone know how they can get in touch with you on social media. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Again, uh, hit me on social media on IG, King Midas, C-H, King Midas, C-H. That's Instagram. You can catch me on Facebook, um, threads, Twitter, all that. Mm -hmm. 
And again, thank you, good sir. Mm -hmm. Appreciate you. And uh, yeah, I can't wait till the next one. For sure, man. Bravehearts community, you heard it here. Go connect with Matt. As you can tell, the man has wisdom, has experience, and and talking real. I mean, just unadulterated, real conversations that we got to have. So y'all make sure y'all connect with Matt. Uh, and I know the ladies probably, once they see this, they're going to be all in your DMs and stuff. But, you know. The DMs are open. <laughs> the DMs are open. They are. They are. Listen, I'm 6'2", ladies. You know, I go to the gym regularly. How you doing? Nice to meet you. Hey, that's what's up. <laughs> but ladies, go slide that DM. <laughs> Uh, make sure you connect with Matt. Uh, if you are watching this via YouTube, make sure you hit the subscribe button and share this with someone. If you are listening to this via podcast, leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. Uh, you can leave a rating and review on Spotify too as well, but I think it's better when you do it on Apple. Um, put this in your group chat. Send this to your friends in the group chat so y'all can have something to talk about besides gossiping. Um, <laughs> if you leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts, that'll put you on a drawing for a free Amazon gift card. Who doesn't like free stuff? Uh, this is Sean Heineman with special guest Matt Walker, and we 